Editing is the post-production process of selecting written, film, visible and audible media and assembling them to convey meaning and information in a complete piece of work, such as the opening title for the television program Friends. But first, let's begin with the history of editing. The history of editing begins with the development of the first camera by Thomas Edison, who later developed his kinetoscope to view the motion pictures that had been shot, although only one person could view it at any time by looking through a small hole as the film strip was moved across a backlight. The Lumia brothers began producing short films with Edison. There were one long static lockdown shot. Motion in the shot was all that was needed to amuse the audience, so the first films contained things such as traffic or people moving in the street. George Méliès was a magician that was one of the first people to use the in-camera editing method when making films. The Vanishing Lady was one of the first films he used this method in, in 1896. In-camera editing is when the film is shot in the order in which it's intended to be viewed, so that no post-production editing is needed. It can be used to create the illusion of a person disappearing, such as in this piece of footage. G.A. Smith made the film The Kiss in the Tunnel. It is considered to mark the beginning of narrative editing or creating a story. He used the darkness when passing through the tunnel to cut and stick two pieces of film together, moving location of the film into the train from the outside. This is one of the first films to do so. The art of storytelling through editing was developed by Pathé, Porter and Griffith. They all made popular the art of splicing individual shots together in order to make longer and more dramatic films. Different styles of editing. Montage editing is the technique of assembling a number of short shots to music into a sequence to condense space, time and information. This technique was often used in cheesy 80s films such as Rocky, which we imitated here in class by making a parody of the iconic montage scene. Parallel editing is when cutting occurs between two separate locations or different points in time. D.W. Griffith is often cited for his use of this technique and it was famously present in the Hannibal Lecter film Silence of the Lambs. Experimental editing. The French New Wave filmmakers such as Jean-Luc Godard and the American Andy Warhol pushed the limits of editing techniques during the late 1950s and throughout the 1960s. French New Wave films use unorthodox methods such as freeze frames, scratching of film reels and unusual camera angles. These inspired more modern films such as Death Proof and Planet Terror. Classic Hollywood editing otherwise known as invisible or continuity editing, is the predominant style of film editing and video editing in the post-production process of filmmaking and narrative films and television programs. The purpose of continuity editing is to smooth over the inherent discontinuity of the editing process and to establish a logical coherence between shots. A good example of this would be successful television series Dexter. Classic traits of the Hollywood editing style are things such as the 180 degree rule. The 180 degree rule is present in this scene of Pulp Fiction. This is when all the shots of a scene are filmed within an area to one side of the subject, made by the axis that the two characters sit on, and the 180 degree arc labelled green on the diagram. This method of filming is used to ensure that the audience is not confused by the positioning or narrative of the footage. If this rule was not followed, the audience would see two people talking opposite each other in one shot and in the next they would swap positions, which would confuse the audience and would not allow the film to flow in a way that is enjoyable to watch. The eyeline theory is another example of Hollywood editing that uses the premise the audience will want to see what the character on screen is seeing. They will often be looking at something off screen in the first shot, followed by a second shot of what the character was looking at. This technique is used in the Hitchcock film Psycho when Bates is shown looking through a hole in the wall and the next shot shows what he was looking at. There is also the reverse shot technique. This is where a character is shown looking at another character that is often off screen and then the other character is shown looking back at the first character. This is often used for dialogue scenes between two characters like this scene from Made in Britain. Editing transitions. There are many different editing transitions that can be used when making a film that all create different tone, pace and meaning. These include fading to and from black and white, fade to white predominantly used for the beginning of a film and black for the end. Black fades are also used to separate time periods or events within a film and usually show the passing of a long period of time. 
The cut is the most common way of joining two shots together. A straight cut is when shot A suddenly ends and shot B suddenly begins. These can be used in many different moments as the cut is so simple that it can be used to convey almost any kind of mood or feeling within a scene. In the film Nightcrawler, quick straight cuts are used to convey speed, action and panic. A contrast cut is when shot A shows something calm and peaceful like a meadow and shot B cuts to chaos such as a burning builder or a murder scene. The chaos becomes intensified due to the sudden change from one tone to the next. Crossfades are also commonly used in relaxing scenes, such as in the opening scene to the David Lynch film Blue Velvet. It not only creates a relaxing tone, but similarly to a fade to black, can show the passing of a longer period of time. Although crossfades are usually used to maintain lighter, happier themes, fade to blacks create more moody and dark themes within a scene, which is what I used when making my Media Studies movie trailer. Wipe transitions are when shot A is pushed out of the frame by the second shot. They are usually considered to be cheesy and are used in montages or light-hearted pieces of film such as comedy. Jump cuts are usually used by directors to quicken certain actions such as travelling from one location to another when the character is on foot. They can also create more of an alternative and fast-paced tone such as in the 1960s film Breathless. Why edit? Editing is what changes a number of separate bits of footage into one continuous piece of film that has meaning, tells a story and actually has a purpose. If not for some kind of editing, films would still be at the stages of solely showing moving images on a screen. Editing creates meaning by assembling shots in a way so that they relate to each other and show the development or meaning of either characters, places, objects and situations as a whole. Replacing a shot after a reaction with something of a completely different nature can completely change the meaning of the character's reaction and the story as a whole. This theory was experimented with and explored by Kuleshov. He showed an audience a picture of a man's face by a different object each time that he was looking at. After the showing, he interviewed the audience who said that their interpretation of the man's reaction had changed depending on what he was looking at. In this scene from the film True Romance, Editing is used to show meaning in many different ways. First of all, a series of shots are put together of the two main characters in this scene. They are sitting opposite each other and having a conversation. The editing in this scene tells us that they are having a conversation with each other because cuts are made during, before and after certain lines so that the other character's reaction and response can be seen to what was just said. This editing method shows the audience that in this specific scene, Wally is intimidated by Don Vincenzo as his unsettled and frightened expressions change and develop according to the conversation. The 180 degree rule has been followed to ensure that the audience is aware of the positioning of the two main characters and extras and do not become confused about where they are sitting and the composition of the scene as a whole. This allows them to have a better understanding of who is affected by certain actions and events and therefore follow the narrative. When Don Vincenzo makes a fist, we see it from behind his hand and then from behind Dennis Hopper's character. He begins to move his fist towards his face and the scene cuts to a close-up shot of Dennis Hopper being punched. The combination of these two shots tells the audience that Vincenzo punched Wally even though you cannot see that it was him that did so in the close-up shot. We cannot fully see Vincenzo pull a chair up as the focus of the shot is on Wally. However, the unfocused object moves into the bottom left corner of the frame. The combination of the little information we're given visually and the audible media of the chair scraping against the floor gives the audience the understanding of what is happening in the scene without needing to blatantly show it. Later on towards the end of the scene, juxtaposing music is played over the top of Wally being shot in the head. This use of juxtaposing music has been used in many other films such as Reservoir Dogs and in my own media studies production that I made. He creates more of a sadistic tone to a murder scene as he creates the impression that the murderer is twisted and enjoys killing people in a dramatic and over elaborate manner. This feeling is also created by the hysteric laughing and happiness expressed by the characters just before the death of Wally. 
I hope you enjoyed my contextual study. Thank you for watching.